one of the United States leading design uh, firms in terms of uh, zoo exhibit design, and that's ELM. Uh, and they will be joining us again here uh, this month to do another round of, of uh, the definition of the exhibit and, and, the, and the detailed design of it. But uh, one of the things that we've done is bring uh, a very careful layering of not only uh, an, uh, an opportunity to view the animal, but working closely with the education committee and all that to bring a layer of education and, uh, and fun into the overall experience of the Ocelot exhibit. Um, though we have um, a number of wish list items, we'll see how far we can get with, and, and, and staying very true to our budget, which is a primary objective. But we have a number of uh, really fun, creative ideas that are interactive in nature that give all of the guests a chance to uh, uh, get in close and, and, and really experience the, uh, the ocelot. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that. The other thing that we're excited about is it's, uh, the design of the exhibit is uh, it's almost a notion of dematerializing so that the enclosure itself will just blend in to the, the green and the natural landscape that is, is uh, just behind us right here. And we really like to, as was beautifully executed with Tierra de los Pampas, the, uh, the notion of making the enclosure almost invisible to the experience of the animal itself. So that's a number one objective that we'll also be striving uh, to accomplish in our work with ELM as we move closer to uh, the final design for the project. So. Anyway, um, it's going to be really wonderful, it is going to be compact, it is going to be affordable, and we are going to do it for our budget, and, uh, and it will be something that we'll all be extremely proud of. So uh, with that, I will introduce, I believe, Gerardo Moet. Uh, come on up, Gerardo. Well, I, uh, I just wanted, to, on behalf of the city, I'm the director of Parks and Recreation Agency, and uh, not only is the zoo part of the agency, but the public libraries, of course, the parks, the rec centers, and so forth, but the public libraries reminds me a great deal about the importance of education. Sixty-two years ago, this zoo started, and uh, it started because a resident provided land to the city on the condition that there will always be 50 monkeys. And, and that might sound like a funny story, and it is, because there always needs to be 50 monkeys or else we might lose the land back to the family. But the important thing is that it began this, this amazing opportunity for Orange County, because this is Orange County's main zoo, that instead of going to LA or San Diego, the children and the families of Orange County are able to get a real experience of what nature and wild animals are all about. What David said about this blending of habitat, that's so important, especially right now. Most people are learning about nature and animals through the internet or TV. And it's a very, very amazing opportunity to really learn live. And I can't tell you how excited I am with regards to this species, the ocelot, and also how grateful I am to the friends of the Santa Ana Zoo for what their leadership they're doing and how in, in, in some of the worst budget times we're able to do this kind of thing. They were uh, a leader on the Tierra de las Pampas. They're a leader on this ocelot exhibit as well. <clears throat> but the winners, the winners are the population, the millions of people that live here in Orange County, that they can come here and learn real, real direct experience on what it is to, for, for this amazing uh, species, what it is, the existence and the habitat. So it's, it's an amazing thing that we have right in the center of one of the most urban uh, places. We have this oasis uh, that is just an amazing thing. And the winners are the children, their parents, the families, because this is something else. Uh, turn off the computer games, come to the Santa Ana Zoo. And this last year we had record attendance, over 285,000. We've never had so many people come. It is people are recognizing that this is the place to come, and it's a very special th place to come. And nothing to take away from uh, San Diego and LA; those are also good experiences. But it's a very, very big Southern California, and so this zoo is is a gem, a pearl. So thank you to the friends, and uh, thank you. I can't wait to see to see these wonderful cats um, 
because we need we need to add to the collection the diversity that we have. So thank you very much. Thank you, and I'm going to uh, be calling up Patty Mickey. But one thing that I wanted to do is um, the zoo really is. Um, about the people that work here. And there are quite a few people, our staff people, that came out to um, see this happen. And they really are the ones that, that make the zoo alive and real. And so, staff people, hello. But, and Kevin, who uh, helped uh, set up the wonderful uh, display here. But it really is the staff, and hi, Vanessa, um, one of our zookeepers. But I can't say enough about our staff, because people talk about their experience here at the zoo, and it's the staff that makes that experience alive. Um, but it is our friends who help make these types of um, events happen through the fundraising, and it's um, great that we have this partnership. And uh, Patty Mickey, the chair of uh, the Friends of Santa Ana Zoo Development Committee, is going to uh, uh, say a few words. Hi, I'll make it quite just a few words because everyone has said so well uh, what is going on here. And it is all of you, all of us pulling together that have made this such a special opportunity. And the intimacy of the, of the exhibit and the ability to deal with the animals is just something that you can't get like you can get here anywhere else. Um, I start, I got involved with this, and don't worry, I'm not going to go back to where I was born. Um, when I was on safari with Ron Glazier, and we were looking at servals at the time in Tanzania, and I said, oh, we, if only we could have a cat. And he said, well, we're, we're looking into that. And he said, well, the, you know, the best way for you to get involved in that would be to get on the board. Well... <laughs> That's all she wrote. So um, I've been involved in that with all of these wonderful people. Um, we have the uh, support of so many people, as you can see here. Many of them have been on board for a very long time. Um, the educational component, the, the development component, thank you again, Christy, for U.S. Bank's participation. It's all community. And um, the Ocelot is just exactly right for our little zoo. And I could tell you more about them, but I will mention one thing. Um, being a part of, um, of AZA and part of the um, uh, species uh, preservation um, is a very important thing because the ocelots are, you know, on the edge of the endangered. But in having them and interacting with other AZA exclusive zoos that follow a, a major guideline procedure that we are proud to have done as well. Thank you, Kent. Thank you all of the board, um, everyone. Uh, the, the, the species will be protected in a way that's almost like I've heard it described as a hard drive. So the animals are out there in the wild doing their thing, but we're making sure that we have them. You know, we're not grabbing them and, you know, putting them in cages. We're giving them an opportunity to make more, and obviously our animals are happy, so they do. So this will keep the species going and give people the opportunity to have a hands-on, well, not hands-on exactly, personal um, experience. So I'd like to thank you all. I think we're going to do hands-on with, with the interactives from, from That's right. the education team. And thank you so much. We're about to... Uh, get ready for some photo shots of our beautiful uh, shovels and uh, we made it easy on you we brought in dirt so you didn't have to actually dig in the, in the grass so nice. but uh, one person that I did not um, thank is uh, Kathy Decker the executive director of the Friends who um, deserves a lot for, uh, for, for guiding the organization on and for really helping create a strong partnership between the Friends and the city um, Without her um, leadership, um, this this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much. Yes. But uh, what I'd like to do is, I, I believe, I was looking at this, I believe there are eight board members here and uh, with our um, wonderful and, and beautifully attired Debbie Friedman there in her little uh, 
little uh, cast I was noting that um, it's one of those few times where you get it's an appropriate place to wear your uh, your cat tie or cat scarves and you know prints. So, but um, why don't we get the um, friends board up here to uh, since you helped um, with so much and uh, to get this money going to grab a shovel and uh, get the get some pictures. We can do it in chill. Oh, no. Yeah, we'll do it in chill. Is anybody going to use that one in the stomach? Oh, sure. Yeah, we're on the shovel. Yeah, we're on the shovel. Yeah, we're on the shovel. No, no.